What's going on, it's the Rap Nerd, and I just got out of seeing Strangers Chapter 1. Now, this is linked to the original somehow. I've heard it was a prequel, but seeing the movie, I'm not sure how that works with the advancement of technology, or maybe that doesn't matter and it is a prequel, but it's attached to the first one. Somehow, we will see in the other films, but this time it follows a young couple named Maya and Ryan who are on a cross-country trip for their five-year anniversary of dating. Their car breaks down in a small town called Oregon, excuse me, called Venus, Oregon, and they have to wait overnight for the mechanic to fix something, so they end up getting an Airbnb nearby, and lo and behold, that's when the strangers strike, and it's a, a game of cat and mouse. Now, this movie has been torn apart by most reviews, and I'm here to say that most of that stuff is valid. I would say all of it is valid. I'm not going to front here, but I'm putting that out there first because, honestly, I enjoyed the film for what it was. I liked it a lot, and it's by no means better than the first Strangers or even close to it, but as an installment in the, in the actual films that we have now, we have three of them now, I would watch this again, and I had a good time watching it because I knew what to expect. I knew what I was going in with seeing. I like I didn't expect it to be anywhere near as good as Chapter 1, nor should I say you should go in thinking that or whatever. You can think what you want. You can hate it. If you do hate it, I understand it. I just have a prestige shitty taste where I like bad movies and as long as they check certain boxes I'm gonna enjoy them but I still can acknowledge that they're bad so everything you've seen is true it, it, it's it's pretty much a, a retelling of the first one but just not as good it's not as tense it's not as brutal it's not as much of a for what it is as its own film it does work for me personally for me so one of the big things that's changing is the relationship dynamic Ryan and Maya are like deeply in love and you can tell that they have a nice friendship and there's a camaraderie in this relationship opposed to the first film when the couple was on the rock so the tension is just different you know the first one having that tension between the couple going through this thing it, it adds a lot more like oomph to what's going on whereas here you really get a sense of of like danger for me personally i'm not speaking for anybody else but there's a there's a level of danger here that you can sense from either one, especially Ryan wanting to protect his his girlfriend. And I also like that Ryan isn't like a, 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 a bitch ass boyfriend. You know, some movies do that where it's like the guy just is just a terrible dude. Like he's always missing or he gets knocked out at the beginning of the movie and it's, it's up to her to fend off everybody. No, he was in the entire movie. Emotional punches the first one because of the way they set up. But all in all, you know, those are valid, but I still like it for what it was. So first of all, it is sort of a retelling of the first film, but it's not an exact carbon copy like I've seen some people say. It does redo things that happened in the first one in different ways, which I do like to uh, relate it back to, you know, the negatives, of course. It is a trope fest. It's a trope fest like hell. The same type of scares. You know, she's in the shower, the camera pans over, you see a stranger there. Uh, all of these different things, jump scares, all the things that you can imagine that, that these movies like this or like burglary films or home invasion films the tropes of those horror type movies are all here all present so it's nothing that should be surprising to anyone another thing about the retelling the setting for this film is like the first movie but i feel like the the, the characters of the strangers if you will are more like prey at night so it's like you, you put the prey at night uh strangers in the original movie and that's kind of what this is because in the first film the stranger characters to me just felt like sadistic, sick people who were just not rap tight. Like if you were to take their mask off, they would probably have blank faces just kind of like, because they snap pretty much. Whereas in Prey of Night and here, I feel like they're smiling under these masks because they're having a good time doing it. Like there's, there's more personality to the strangers in this movie in the same way there was in Prey. Because I remember people really didn't like Prey because of that. Whereas in the first movie, they were just... No personality, the body movement, none of that kind of stuff was was, was showed any type of uh, personable movements or anything in the first film. Whereas here, they're playing. Like, I mean, you have one point when the couple is hiding and one of the girls under the mask walks over to a piano and she's playing the piano with a knife. You can just tell like, oh, you're having a, a really, really good time doing this. So there's that and it makes the dynamic different. And another thing that makes this movie different is the town folk and just the city of Venus. Like in this movie, Venus itself is a character because they do a lot of things in the town when they get there. You know, there's a point when, when they first arrive, you deal with the mechanic and a few people they see standing around. So they already presents this concept of like, there's more than just 
these three people who are the strangers attacking us. It, it, it makes it feel like there's, there's there's something going on with this town. Can it, like I said, being one of them, then they go to a diner and eat and there's more weird people of this town here. Then later on, they go back out to get some food for takeout and it's more weird people. And just the things that the people are saying and the way they're looking at them, there's a lot of like into windows uh, about something else happening beneath the layer of what we just see and that adds a certain mystery to the film that makes me wonder like hmm these people are acting like this it's got to be something where these strangers are either people amongst this town or there's some type of secret something going on as to why that they allow this shit to happen there's even one point when ryan runs into the mechanic again and he's kind of like, you should have said something before you did whatever he did in the film. And it's a sense of urgency from the mechanic where he's like, you kind of messed up here like by doing this. Even the looks that they get from other people, like I said, when he goes back out to get takeout. And that just adds something that makes me want to be like, what's going on here? I want to know more about these people and why they are so involved with this thing. Because in the original Strangers, we don't know nothing about the city. It pretty much took place in the house and that was it. You know what I mean? And same thing with Pray at Night. It took t place in this little trailer park and that's it. Whereas here, there's other people around and it's clear that they know something is up. So I did like that aspect about it too. And I can say that the way the film ends really intrigues me. I, I, like, I do want to see more. I want to see where the story goes because it does do something that the first one didn't. That's one of the real, real reasons why I do give this movie a little leeway and why I do like it and I enjoy it is because I know that there's more to come. And I watched the director talk about it. The movie was originally supposed to be one big movie. He said they wrote a 200 page script and Lionsgate was like, we can't release that to theater. So they broke it up into three pieces. So knowing that this is the first act of the film per se or the first act of the story i kind of understand why it was so cliche i understand why it was really tropey because that was just the presentation i feel like the chunk of what the story represents that you know why they shot these movies is are in the second and third movie and i feel like that is where things are going to get taken somewhere because i went into the movie knowing like this is going to be a trope fest they're they're presenting the first aspect of the film to get into the other shit and i respect it you know and again i'm not saying anybody else has to respect you you don't have to you can hate this movie because i agree like if this was just a one-off film I would be like, nah, this ain't it. Like, this definitely ain't it. Like, what was the purpose of this? But knowing that there's more to come and they're going to build upon what this is, because, again, that ending had me like, hmm. In context of what this film does, being a home invasion movie, it just takes me different places. Like, Halloween, you know, how the continuation of those movies happen and where it's like, the way the first one ends, you can go places a lot of different places and i feel like strangers kind of did that here that's what i want to say about the film i don't I, you know i don't want to spoil anything for those who do want to watch it i think that if you go in there knowing that it's a, it, you know it's more like pray at night and it's not gonna at all touch the first one you may have a good time if you've seen strangers chapter one let me know in the comments what you think where do you compare it with the other three films definitely strangers the, the very first one is the best and doesn't hold a candle to that but still enjoyable for me amongst all of the tropes and all of the, the things that are you expect with the film but anyway, if you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, thank you. And until next time, peace. Rap Nerd Productions, no capping, that's word to mommy.